Hello everyone, welcome to This Day. It is Thursday, September 12th. I'm Michael Taylor. Welcome to the program. We're glad you're here. Hope you're enjoying this nice temperatures we're having, some cooler temperatures. We'll talk about that in just a second. But right now on today's show, we want to talk about what's going on there. We've got the Golden Rain Foundation Treasurer, William Cohen, coming in. He's going to be talking to us about what's going on at Clubhouse One, some of the budget decisions we've been making, uh, early voting opportunities here in the village. So lots of good stuff from him. Then Democratic Club's going to be here. they got a couple of speaking events with their speakers coming in, candidates that are on the upcoming ballot, as well as a voting drive effort that they have. So stay tuned for that as well. Hey, let's keep on the politics while we talk about our stay informed. And if you want to go over and talk to the folks at United Town, uh, United Mutual, they're going to have a town hall for us. So the board members will be at the town hall, and it's really just an open session for residents. Come on down. You're invited to come down and let them know what's going on in your community. If there's a challenge or problem, you have a question, this is a kind of an open forum where there's no agenda, but just really a talking session. So get over there. It's going to be this Friday, tomorrow, September 13th, 2 p.m., over at the Performing Arts Center in Clubhouse 3, room number 2. So make sure you get out there and make your voice heard. Let's take a look outside at our weather while we're at it. Hey, we've got those lingering clouds going on, and that is helping out and keep, keeping our temperatures cool and not too breezy. But um, I don't know if we'll get to 78 today. These clouds are lingering a little longer than they did yesterday, so maybe just mid-70s today. Well, that would be nice. Uh, it's going to be mostly sunny by this afternoon or late morning. And then morning clouds, same kind of thing for Friday, and maybe a little bit more sunny on Saturday. And Sunday, we've got some great mid-70s. But then look at Monday. Now we're talking about we're in these waning days of summer, but they, that looks like a fall day to me right there on Monday so let's enjoy that while we can. Let's take a look at our sunrise and our sunset. Had a great picture here over a clubhouse for golf course. Thank you David Southworth for sending that to us. Sunrise this morning was 632. Sunset tonight is going to be 7 p.m. Hey, we love these pictures you guys send in. Keep them coming. If you'd like to send us a picture and you never have, I dare you to do so. You can just email us that picture, lagunawoodsvillagetv at gmail.com. Make sure you include your name, where you took the picture, and make sure it's horizontal if you can, and we will use it in our sunrise sunset segment. Okay, if you like meetings, we got lots of them for you. And then after that, we'll be talking about, uh, we'll talk with the Golden Rain Foundation, getting an update on what's going on there. Stay with us. Welcome to the Artist Tree, South Orange County's only cannabis dispensary located right here in Laguna Woods. The Artist Tree is your trusted source for the highest quality cannabis products and the best customer service. We offer daily deals up to 50% off on top brands. Whether you're new to cannabis or a seasoned consumer, our friendly and informative staff is here to help you elevate in style. We're located next to Gate 3 and now offer delivery right to your door. Join us for a one-of-a-kind dispensary experience. Caring Senior Service provides a variety of care services to help seniors age in place. We cook, we clean, we listen, we help, we care. And that's why we create customized care plans to enable every senior to maintain their independence. To learn more about how we can help your family, contact us today. beyond better hearing with artificial intelligence. At Advanced Ear Care, we've taken regular hearing care to a new level with artificial intelligence performance. This provides smarter, clearer balance of sound. Artificial intelligence identifies background noises and reduces them so you can hear the soft-spoken speech clearly. Don't be afraid of this technology. It works automatically. Put them on and hear better all day in all situations. Hear the conversations clearly with family, friends, and caregivers. And remember, tell them Stuart sent you. Tickets are on sale at the Performing Arts Center for Kalimba. The Spirit of Earth, Wind, and Fire on November 9th, presented by the California Club. Enjoy a tribute full of the energy and soul of Earth, Wind, and Fire with songs like September and Boogie Wonderland. Purchase tickets at the Pack Box Office or online at CaliforniaClubLWV.com or call 949-597-4289. Enjoy the music of Earth, Wind, and Fire like it was meant to be.
Lots of great stuff going on at the Golden Rain Foundation and Treasurer William Cohen's here to tell us all about it. Thank you for joining us. Glad to be here. And welcome to the show. I don't think we've ever talked before. No, we haven't. No, thank <laughs> well, you. Well, we've got some great news to talk about. Clubhouse One. Yes, Clubhouse One is finally done. Yes. Uh, we, uh, uh, th that process began a while ago and there was a, quite a controversy over how we would do it, whether or not we would do it all at once or right. do it in phases. And we determined that it made the most sense to just do it. Just knock and it out. Just, and, it, and that process saved us a bunch of money and it mm -hmm. saved us a bunch of time. Mm -hmm. And so um, this process, we're, we began the move-in process September 3, as you can see on the slide here, sure. uh, we have what, what, what they're calling a soft reopening on September 16th. I'm not mm -hmm. sure what's soft about it, since I think we're going online with almost everything. You're going for it. <laughs> um, and uh, until that, we're doing the punch list is what's happening right, right now. Right. And uh, the, the transition for the various clubs and, and other parts of the community that are you know, regularly used Clubhouse One and are mm -hmm. now been relocated somewhere else will be phased back into Clubhouse One starting on the 16th. So they should, they should expect a call from recreation staff uh, as it relates to that. Right, right. Um, but we do have some amenities that are opening up right away. Uh, next, if we can put up the next slide. Sure, yeah. The pool is going to be up there and a fitness center some other stuff. Yeah, we've got the pool, the fitness center, the gymnasium, archery, and shuffleboard. Uh, I want to stop by and see the archery. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the drop-in lounge is going to be open, the game room, and also the... Bus system is uh, reestablishing. The, the transportation, transportation hub's hub. back at its old place where old, it used to be. Old so place where it used to be. Things are going to be new and so, the same all at once. So we're all very excited about yeah. uh, about Clubhouse One. And so people shouldn't expect perfection from all this, right? This September 16th, there's going to be some cut tweaks here and there. That's why it's kind of a soft opening yeah. in a sense, right? So there's going to be some hurdles to overcome, but let people know what's going on yeah. and that kind of thing, and things will get uh, you know make progress as they go, right? Well, and, and in particular, I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, the the that if there is something that doesn't seem right uh, to you, bring it to the attention of the staff because mm -hmm. you know uh, multiple eyes, different sets of eyes right. are all uh, always useful. Yeah, and so uh, I would encourage people to, if they see things that seem out of place, to just to mention it. Yeah, the good news overall is it was on time and on budget, which is a hard thing to do these days. Yeah, kudos <laughs> to staff for pulling that off. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, also, some stuff going over that we have voting. Uh, we're going to do some drop-in voting. Yes, uh, the county contacted us about uh, trying to set up a drop-in voting center uh, here on premises, and there actually was quite a bit of discussion about that. Uh, originally, we were going to put it over at uh, Gate 12, uh, and. The issue of public access as opposed to private access, community access versus all, all mm -hmm. the public was an issue. Um, and so it was, uh, it was relocated to Clubhouse 3. And uh, it is Saturday, November 2. Uh, it, is it is behind our gates. And so it is a secure location. It's being advertised as a private community event. Right. Uh, and the public is not, uh, not right. going to so be. Right. So folks outside the community, they don't live here. They don't have passes. They can't get in they and can't do, get do in. that. So it's going to be secure within the gates. Yeah. All right. So voting is, what, 10 to 4? And this uh, county staff is on site from 7.30 to 6.30. And there is a big event that night. So we have to get all the voting out and bring in all the you know, festivities for the plans for that evening. Yeah. And it's great to make sure that, that something like that is in the community so people can get the access. They don't have to drive off and get out of the area, and, you yeah. know, especially for folks who have some challenges with, mo with mobility and transportation, that kind yeah. of thing, too. We're very glad that we're able to uh, be able to do that. Yeah, and we thank the county for their accommodation. So other business going on, uh, we got the electrical charging stations. Yeah, the, um, is it, it, there's more to the electrical start charging stations than one might imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there is, uh, this is something on what we call 28 day notification. So it comes before the board as an initial matter. The board says that, okay, mm -hmm. we, you know, we approve this, we approve it for, for publication to the public. And then at our next meeting, we will go final with it. Obviously, there's an opportunity for public mm -hmm. input, but we are, um, increasing the charges for level, both the level two and level three chargers uh, that uh, uh, members and employees of the community get uh, 31 cents a kilowatt hour for mm -hmm. both level two and three and the public are 45 cents and 65 cents. And then if you, uh, if you watch the, the, the board meeting, you would realize that there was a great deal of discussion about these parking rates at the mm -hmm. very end here, the last column. And um, yeah, wanted to make it clear, we're not selling parking. What we're, <laughs> what we're doing is encouraging people to leave. Right. You know, once right. you charge up, 
go away. Right, right. Uh, and that's been a problem not just here, but in, in lots of communities. People are taking these spots and they're parking for the day. And even though their car may have charged two or three hours ago, they're just like, that's my parking spot for the day, right? Yeah. So that's one of the challenges when people are trying to get in there and they need a charge, but there's a car stuck there. Yeah. So that, uh, that's, the, that's the idea behind these parking rates. And mm -hmm. uh, it is not, it, it should not be viewed as a, if I paid $2 an yeah, hour, Yeah, that's I'll my meter. It, which is sort of interesting <laughs> because it's otherwise in a free parking lot. So mm -hmm. why would somebody do that? But right. In any right. event, it is an issue. And so that's why we are uh, doing those charges. Right. I think it's more of a, I think it's people have to get in the habit of having that courtesy of, I think my charge, charge should be about three hours in. I need to go move my car so yep. that next person can have their turn. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so we have uh, uh, the golf uh, fees are going to be making some uh, changes as well. Yes, um, there's a uh, we've we've established a process for a regular a regular review of all fees. Okay. Uh, and we have a schedule mapped out uh, for an ongoing basis. Some fees are every year going to be reviewed. Some fees are every two years, and some are every three years. Mm -hmm. But staff knows you know staff and community know this is the cycle, and and it's going to come up. Um, the, the good news on the on the golf fee recommendations is I think that our for residents we're raising the uh, per round fee by one dollar. Okay. So not, it's not a, not a big jump. Not the steepest um, hike I've ever heard of. The, <laughs> but the one of the one of the things that is significant in that is that back in the 1980s the golf golfing community and and the Golden Rain Foundation and the and the you know governance boards in general got together to go over how are we going to do golf, we want a first class golf course, mm -hmm. we need to you know, invest in that. And so there was an understanding reach that there would be a split of the costs of the golf, golf course maintenance of 65% taken from fees, 35% as a shared cost. And in the last few years, that has sort of fallen fallen off, and so okay. we're we're trying to you know say you know, rebalance. That, that, that's, that's a rebalancing. Yeah, going rebalancing. On. That's what it is. That's what's going to be going forward, and this is how it spreads out in this upcoming year. So yeah. that's what that's about. Rallies are those things. Costs yeah. go up, like traffic traffic fee updates, those kinds of things. Yeah. But oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say the traffic fees and the traffic rules also consumed a great deal of uh, of discussion at the meeting. And uh, because a great many people wanted to talk about the rules as opposed to the, the fee, mm -hmm. and it was mm -hmm. about the fee. Right. And the, it, the, it has been determined by those people that make these determinations that, uh, that it appears that people are seeing the, the, the traffic fees as sort of a cost of doing business. It's $25, mm -hmm. whatever, I don't care, you know, right. pay it off. And so it's been recommended, and, and we've now approved it and sent it for 28-day uh, notice to the community that we're going to increase those fees significantly, right. not because we're trying to make money, but because we're trying to encourage behavior. Yeah. Stop at the stop signs. Don't mm -hmm. go over 25. It needs um, to feel more punitive for me to take attention, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and then there's a complete rework of the, gra of the traffic rules and regulations. And so that's a, you know, that's a, that's a large undertaking, and I express great appreciation for the people that have spent a great deal of time working on that. And here's the next one is the thing that I think is probably the most fun for any board, is the budget. The budget, <laughs> yes. And you just finalized this whole process that you've been going through, right? Yeah. So what you, what you see on the screen now is the process that we have followed, which is, as you can see, it started back in March. And it uh, culminated at our, at our last meeting. We had a 28-day review at the prior meeting. And so it, what it comes in at uh, in 2024 is $228 per manor per month. We're raising that to $238, mm -hmm. uh, which is an increase of just under $10, or 4.4%. We are very pleased that we, uh, that we were able to hold that line. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the, the members of the community, the various committees, and the staff have worked for you know six months on this, this right. is this is not a small undertaking, and, right. it, and it, if you're not if you're not in it and paying attention to it, it's easy to say, okay, well, you voted to do the budget. That's nice. Mm -hmm. It's a six month process, yeah. and uh, for, the, for those any members of the community that want to become more involved in that, they are welcome to engage in the next six month process, which will be starting promptly in the spring and continuing <laughs> and through it all next, over. Do again. it all over again. <laughs> and how is that balance? I mean, in your mind, when you have that balance of hey, costs are going up, there's there's things that are just they're real hard costs, labor costs are going up, but we don't want to raise those fees, but the community wants the services, and that's a real kind of hard balancing act. It is a hard balancing act, and the and the um, the 
I think that, that transparency is the most important thing there, for mm -hmm. people to know and understand that these, these things are not arrived at you know, frivolously or right. you know, arbitrarily. There's a whole process that goes into it, and this began at the beginning as a potential $16, I think, per man or per month increase, mm -hmm. which so everybody realized was unrealistic and, and unacceptable. So right. I was very, very pleased that we were get that, to get that down under the $10 mark. Um, but it is, you know, people say, well, what happens if we don't do it? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the world won't come to an end if we don't do it. And, right. and the, the problem is, is that it, it will have this, this, um, this a cumulative effect. You cumulative think it down effect. the rat you get creep. You know, you get this creep. You get mm -hmm. incremental creep. Right. And you start not doing things. You start not maintaining something. This isn't on fire Deferred today. maintenance, as they say. Deferred things maintenance. Like that. And it's just not a good way to run to right. run a railroad. And so the idea is, particularly for the GRF, we're, you know, we're responsible for these amenities. And people expect the amenities to be first class. And we make every effort to do that in an affordable way. All right, well, William Cohen doing the Lord's work over there at the GRF as a treasurer. Thank you for, so much for joining us today. Absolutely, I appreciate it. When we come back, we'll be talking to folks from the Democratic Club. Stay with us. Attention all club organizers, party planners, and those who simply love to gather and celebrate life's special moments. Are you tired of the hassle of cooking for your events? Looking for a convenient and delicious solution? Introducing our easy and convenient catering trays, perfect for groups of any size from 35 to 90. Need a larger space to host your event? Look no further than our restaurant's banquet room, the perfect venue for your next gathering. Call us today to place your catering order or reserve our banquet room for your next event. Create memories and traditions with Polly's Pies. All great healthcare organizations care, but the best dare to reach higher. At Hogue, we lead with life-saving clinical trials and advanced therapies. Our world-renowned specialists innovate with state-of-the-art technologies like virtual reality and robotics. Hogue is the number one hospital in Orange County four years in a row. Now more than ever, your healthcare choices matter. Choose Hogue. At adapt to it we strive to make the everyday tasks easier by providing our customers with the tools they need to be successful. We carefully explain the use and care of all of our equipment. adapt to it has been in Laguna Woods for over 20 years and we know that nothing in life stays constant. So we can help you adapt to all the changes in your life. adapt to it sells and rents items and always delivers with a smile. Come in today to experience what we mean when we say when you can't change it, adapt to it. Do you have cavities, broken or missing teeth, tooth pain or other dental problems? These issues can create more problems than you think, including affecting your overall health. Don't wait until it's too late. Contact Loberg Dental today and your first exam and set of x-rays is free without insurance. It's a great way for you to experience our high quality level of patient care while saving money too. Visit DrLoberg.com to schedule your free exam and x-rays today. Welcome back to the program. I want to welcome the Democratic Club of Laguna Woods to our show. they got all sorts of things going on. Alan Feldman and Mary Rabondo, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having us. Absolutely, and appreciate you guys. We actually had these guys scheduled for yesterday, but they, we had to bump them. We moved them to today, so I also appreciate you guys coming in and making that being flexible for us. How could you resist coming back? <laughs> <We couldn't. laughs> so you guys got some a lot of stuff going on, and uh, one of the events that's coming up is a candidate forum you have coming up next Tuesday, the seventeenth. Yeah, that's that's right. As the uh, election gets closer, yeah, uh, we have a lot of candidates coming to Laguna Woods mm -hmm. over the over the next uh, ten days, really. And uh, the first one is on on Tuesday, September seventeenth. Uh, it's our regular monthly meeting, Clubhouse Two at seven o'clock, and. Uh, uh, we call it Candidates Forum, and mm -hmm. we have, there's three members of the Laguna Woods Democratic Club that are running for the city council in oh, Laguna really? Woods. Oh, okay. right? uh, Sherry Horn and uh, Cynthia Connors are currently on the city council, they're running for re-election, and Pearl okay. Lee is running for the first time. So, I mean, obviously, 
we're doing all we can to support them. And, uh -huh. uh, you know, uh -huh. we're, we're very excited about that. Uh, we also, though, we also have other candidates running, uh, not running in our area, they're going to be there. Ryan Dack, who is running for the South Orange County Community College District. Okay. Uh, and we have Dan Vickers, who's running for the Laguna Beach School Board, School mm -hmm. District. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Laguna Beach School District, actually part of Laguna Woods is in the Laguna Beach oh, School really? District. Oh, really? I did not know that. That's right. So people will be able, some people will be able to vote for her. And also, Krista Castellanos is running for the Capistrano Unified School District, mm -hmm. which also part of Laguna Woods is in, <laughs> is in that district. So the, the, these are uh, these are the down the down ballot candidates. These are the right. people that people don't vote for. They don't vote on these elections. I think because they don't know anything don't about know, the right? candidates. It takes money to get your message out, mm -hmm. uh, and in a presidential election, you know, all well, the energy is sucked sucked up out of the air anyway. Uh, so this is an opportunity for people to put a name with a face when they're looking at the ballot. I think they're more likely to vote for it. Right. Uh, and uh, these elections are really important. They're, uh, they're they, all the local stuff that happens in the community right here. Yeah. Mary, how important, when you go to see one of these forums, and I'm mm -hmm. sure you've attended a few over the, over the years, um, how enlightening is it for you? It's like, wow, kind of eye-opening for you, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it's a great way to get to know the candidates. Again, you hear a name you don't know much about them, mm -hmm. to hear them speak and you know, give, their, uh, give background about themselves and uh, why they're running mm -hmm. is really, I think, important to voters. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, I mean, people are in the voting booth and they're kind of just like, kind of, well, well that seems, you know, they're, they're kind of doing it by the description yeah. sometimes, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and that can be kind of like really a sense of like, where's, where's the value in that vote? Where's the, where's the kind of time and effort that goes into that? Yeah, and we try to do uh, as much, you know, give as much information as we can about mm -hmm. uh, local candidates. Again, you had mentioned last time I was here, all politics are local, so yeah, it's important. Tip O'Neill told me that. <laughs> <laughs> that they know the down ballot uh, candidates. So we've done literature drops. We've invited them to do to speak at our meetings. Um, we deliver door hangers with information mm -hmm. about the candidates and about how to vote, where to vote, when to vote, when you should get your when you will get your ballot, mm -hmm. how to reach the ROV, the registrar of voters, if you don't get your ballot by a certain time, and people find it helpful. You know, um, it, and if they have questions, we also have a, a number on there that they can call mm -hmm. and speak to somebody if they have more questions. But mm -hmm. yeah, the more more we can tell them, the better. Well, it's coming up Tuesday, September 17th, 7 p.m., Clubhouse 2 in the main lounge. So make sure you get out there. Come earlier on 6.30 if you want to socialize. The event starts at 7. Um, what is the challenge of putting one of these panels together? How do you kind of form it? Okay, we're going to do the candidates. We're going to do this, or do you, do you break it down in any way when you put these together? Well, you know, a good, a good segue because <laughs> <laughs> uh, people will know our, our next one. We have another one coming right. exactly uh, a couple of days later on the twenty-first of uh, September. I think it's twenty-first. Yeah, twenty-first, yeah. nine a.m. at which Clubhouse is Saturday. Two. And exactly, if you look at the time this is happening, nine thirty a.m. At Clubhouse too, so that's how difficult it is to put a put a panel like this together, right. especially during the campaign season. Everybody, because they, all these candidates have different events that, they're going it, to and those yeah, kinds of things. That, so to get right. these four in the in that's house, right. well, and this one in, in September, it's a, uh, our legislative candidates, mm -hmm. uh, both federal and uh, state. Uh, Joe Kerr running for Congress in our 40th district. Dave Min, who's running for Congress in our 47th district, mm -hmm. which is just a small part of Laguna Woods, but he's going to be there too. Right. State Senator Josh Newman is running for re-election to the state Senate in our district this time. He got mm -hmm. redistricted. And Dom Jones, who is running for the state assembly, okay. uh, at the, uh, she's going to be there too. So that's another one, and that it, it is really difficult to put it together. But basically everything that we do this time of year and mm -hmm. for most of the year is designed for one thing, mm -hmm. get out the vote. Yes. Get the vote out. Get the what, vote out. And, and that's do what Mary these, does. Do these candidates usually reach out to you guys or are you reaching out to them or how, like, how, do, you, how do you say, okay, here's the panel we're going to try to go for this way? Uh, you might be better off answering that than I am. <laughs> About the candidates? Yeah, like, yeah. are they contacting you saying, hey, I'm going to be in town X, Y, Z days, um, or, or do you reach out to them? I mean, it's a, I think it's a mix. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we try to um, pick a date or a couple of dates and reach out to their campaigns and find out if they're available and um, do our best to <laughs> consolidate, you know. I mean, some... In some cases, we'll have uh, one of the candidates speak first because they have other commitments mm -hmm. uh, to you mm -hmm. know the same day. But again, they're busy. There are clubs in the area and um, other political um, 
you know, organizations that want to hear them. They want, right. to, they want to meet them. So uh, they are spreading themselves pretty thin. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the good news about both these is that you're not charging any outside membership fees or anything like that. So anybody can come. You don't yes. have to be a member of the club, right? Right. We, <laughs> we, 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 we want people to vote. And right. the best way to get people to vote is to have them actually see the, the candidates, and also for, for people who are still interested and haven't done anything yet, they're interested in participating in the election, there's still time. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, and we, we have events going on. I know we're doing, uh, uh, on the 26th, I believe it is, on Sept September, we're going to have a, uh, going to send out 1,500 postcards for Dave Min yeah, in, uh, uh, in the 47th district, mm -hmm. which is a very close race, and mm -hmm. we feel we can be effective there. And we've also, our club has grown immensely in the past year. Uh, I, I think we had a meeting last night. I think uh, the number is we now we have 122 more members this year than we did last year. We're closing in on 600, so our resources are increased. So we're trying to increase our reach. Also, we've written postcards for candidates in other congressional districts in the Central Valley in California, oh, wow, okay. where they have a lot of close races. Where again, we feel like every little bit helps, uh, and uh, we're postcarding and uh, just canvassing for outside of Laguna Woods yeah. Village, mm -hmm. yes. which we really have done. How about the get out the vote efforts? Are you guys kind of ramping that up as we get closer Absolutely, to the election? Absolutely, yes. We'll be kicking that off on the 30th this month. And to Alan's point about reaching outside of the village, mm -hmm. um, we are working with some people to cover the adjacent uh, areas of Laguna Hills. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll be delivering uh, our voter information to them as well as in, inside the village. Mm -hmm. um, but again, we're, our kickoff is on the 30th. Mm -hmm. We have about 145 volunteers ready to go. And we'll be delivering about 7,200 um, door hangers in the village. Okay. And then another 1,200 outside of the village. So. Okay. What's that effort like for you guys in terms of it's kind of it's, it seems like a lot of work. You guys are volunteers. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a nonprofit organization you work for. Uh, it just seems like it, especially during election season, the the, the real the work really kicks up. Yeah. Oh, it, it does. This is Mary is in charge of our get out the vote uh, effort, and she has been for years. Yeah. It's really a spectacular job, but it, it it it's hard. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot it, of work, yeah. yeah. But we have a, a great committee, and uh, we have volunteers who help with everything we need to do, sorting lists for people to walk and getting the door hangers bundled up and making calls, making sure the volunteers are ready to go. All right, well, we got events coming up. Candidate Forum on Tuesday, September 17th, 7 p.m., Clubhouse 2. And then the next one, Saturday, September 21st, 9.30 a.m., Clubhouse 2 as well. And William, I'm sorry, Mary and Alan, thank you so much for joining us from yeah. the Democratic well, Thank Club. you. Thank, thank you very much for having us. That's going to do it for this edition of This Day. Tomorrow on the program, Home Family Cancer Institute's going to be here talking about the efforts they're making in those areas and Sports Corner. So stay tuned for that. I'm Michael Taylor. For all of us here at Village Television, we hope you make this day a great one. <laughs>